This is the slide from the autopsy and uh, this is the part of the left ventricle myocardium with the focus of coagulative necrosis. So the coagulative necrosis is here, here and also here. So the darker eosinophilic or hyper eosinophilic area, that's the coagulative necrosis or in other words, that's the myocardial infarction. Uh, these cells here, they are cardiomyocytes with eosinophilic cytoplasm with cross striations, but the nuclei are localized in the center of the cells, unlike in skeletal muscle cells. And in between the cardiomyocytes, there is connective tissue, some more blood vessels. Here we see erythrocytes, this is cardiomyocyte, this is the nucleus of the cardiomyocyte. And here we are back again. Um, <clears throat> so connective tissue plus newly formed blood vessels, uh, fibroblasts and myofibroblasts. So this is granulation tissue and in other parts we can see connective tissue. So this is myofibrosis. And that's the result of chronic ischemia, um, as in the case of chronic ischemic heart disease. It could be caused by atherosclerosis, um, by hypertrophy of the left ventricular wall, and um, that's usually the result of systemic hypertension, or by combination of both factors, which is usually the case. When carotid artery is affected by severe atherosclerosis, and part of this process uh, is um, a presence of atheromatous plaque, then these plaques can rupture and after rupture or ulceration of the plaque uh, the subendothelial collagen is exposed, the thrombosis can occur and then uh, the car carotid artery can be completely occluded and uh, we can see ischemia or focus of myocardial infarction as in this case. Um, the necrosis in <coughs> uh, in cardio um, in um, left ventricular wall is an example of coagulative necrosis, and necrosis under the microscope um, looks like hyper eosinophilic cells without visible nuclei. The nuclei are completely lost, and after ischemia occurs, the nuclei undergo pycnosis, karyorexis, and karyolysis, and then they are not visible anymore. Um, the rest of the destroyed chromatin from the nuclei can be seen as these multiple small blue dots. This is also called karyorectic debris. So these blue dots, that's what used to be nuclei of these cardiomyocytes. Uh, in the first 12 to 24 hours we don't see anything under the microscope. Uh, then gradually we can see contra contraction bands and loss of nuclei. Um, cardiomyocytes are, are thinner and a little bit wavy as we see it here. But this is not the necrosis um, because we still see the nuclei. Necrosis is followed by acute inflammation, so neutrophils are the first cells that come to the tissue. And um, after around three days, macrophages and lymphocytes follow. Uh, from three days to one week, uh, we can see myocyte loss, cardiorexis of, ne of neutrophils, and cardiorexis of uh, cardiomyocytes. We can see early phagocytosis by macrophages. And then after, after around two weeks, we can see well-established granulation tissue. So that's what we see here. We can identify small capillaries which are newly formed capillaries and these cells are mostly fibroblasts, myofibroblasts and the pink material in between the cells that's collagen fibers. So this is um, myocardial infarction which is approximately two weeks old 
because here we see the granulation tissue which is part of the healing process and over the time the granulation tissue will fill the defect fill the whole necrosis and after a few weeks or a few months uh, we will see scar tissue um, <clears throat> all these fibroblasts will produce more collagen fibers and finally there will be just scar tissue composed only of collagen but that will take some time and in this case the patient didn't survive so we don't see scar tissue we see acute myocardial infarction okay so that's how it works thanks for watching